All right, welcome friends. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Google Bard. I have had access to it for a number of days now, have been tinkering with it. And uh, let's just kind of dive right into this. It is located at bard.google.com. Uh, they're just starting to roll out access. If you don't have access to it yet, you hopefully should soon if you were signed up for the wait list. The only unfortunate thing is if you have a paid Google account, you probably are not going to get an invitation. I've yet to get one on my paid Google account, which is very frustrating considering I'm paying money for it. Uh, so this is on just a general Google account. So when you open up the interface, first and foremost, what you're gonna notice here is, is that it's pretty bland. There's not a lot going on here. It leaves much to be desired in terms of the way that it looks. Uh, it is very boring and Google admits that and they seem to like that. So that's not really a plus, but okay. Up here it says Bard Experiment. Okay, when you click on the drop down here, that just moves the menu. You do have a reset chat button and we have Bard Activity. Now here is the frustrating part of this right out of the gate. Not unlike a chat GPT, you're gonna see a stream of all your conversations in your chats. Bard does not offer that. So what happens is you get one of these, you just get your prompting area here in your conversation, but it will not save it. It will save what you have entered into the prompt over here into the Bard activity tab, but you will not have the entire chat. So the only way to actually save what you have done in your conversation is to copy and paste this into a separate document. That is extremely cumbersome. And uh, as you're gonna find out here as we go, that is a big hindrance to using this tool. So it does have an FAQ here, help and support, yada, yada. So over here, of course, it says BART is still in the experimental phase and chatting with it and rating its responses will help improve the experience. So it's still pretty early here. So it's always asking for feedback, as you will see. Uh, over here, you can use your microphone to enter in some prompting here. But of course, as with all language uh, translation between audio to text, it's oftentimes not very perfect, okay? So as we go through here, first and foremost, I'm gonna be looking at this from an SEO perspective because obviously that's where I, I am focused. I wanna make content and let's see how BARD works. Now, the cool thing about BARD is that it does have internet access. So if we ask it right here, do you have access to the internet to see current events? And what you're gonna notice here is that in the streaming here, it doesn't have that little chat function moving here, it just spins and it just pastes the information here. You won't see it kind of like type it out as you do with ChatGPT. So in the answer here, it just plops it and you notice it was pretty quick. Uh, yes, I do have internet access to the internet. I'm able to process information from the real world through Google search and keep my response consistent with search results. So that's obviously one of the most enticing benefits here is that it has access to Google search. So we would imagine that we're gonna get some insights here that we haven't been able to get from other search engine AI tools. So after every response here, you get a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can generate the new response. You can also Google it, okay? So there's still a strong emphasis. Obviously, Google is motivated here to get you to go to search because that's where there's a lot of advertising dollars, right? So they're not willing to give that up yet. Over here, you'll see other drafts. This is an interesting one. You'll click on this. It will give you different uh, responses and you can search through here to see if there is something different that is more valuable, okay? So we're gonna get rid of that. Let's see what these drop down tabs offer. We can copy it. And again, this is what I was talking about, copying this information so that you could paste it somewhere else. So another question that we're gonna to wanna to know right away is do you have access to Google Keyword Planner data? And of course it's gonna process here and it's just gonna vomit that response out here real quick. There you go. We have access to keyword data, uh, planner data. I can use it to research keywords. So this is pretty cool. And this is what is gonna save us some extra steps. If we could just go to the chat bot, we can get keyword planner data and then just get it right out. So the other thing that I've noticed here, and this is something that is interesting, is that it does also tell us uh, on previous searches that it has access to SEMrush. So do you additionally have access to SEMrush website data? And we'll ask it that, and it additionally does. Okay, there it is. 
I can use it to analyze websites, traffic, keywords, and backwards. This information is going to help me identify keyword opportunities. Okay. So now we can kind of put this to the test here and to see if it actually will do a good job with this. Now, as usual, I always go back to this. Some of you find this entertaining. I go to tree removal services just because that is the consistent one that I always use. So those of you, if this is your business in here, I'm not picking on you. It just happens to be the first thing that's on here. So if I go to this uh, site right here, we're gonna copy that link address and let's go back over to Bard. And we're going to enter our prompt here and let's just do something very simple. Take a look at this website and tell me what the top ranking pages are for traffic. Okay, and we'll paste that in there and then we'll hit enter. Let's see what it says. Okay, so the top ranking pages for traffic on this website are tree removal, tree trimming. Okay, so these say, these are the pages, okay? They're ranked high because they're relevant to the audience, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so these aren't the pages, these are actually keywords. So if I ask what are the URLs for these pages, and let's see what it says. Okay, it says that it can't assist you with that. I'm only a language model and don't have the capacity to understand and respond. So what we're seeing here is, is that it says that it has access to the internet, but at the same time is telling us that it cannot do these things. Okay, so this is the frustrating part you're gonna see with BARD. Does it or does it not have access and what can it do? So if I were to ask it in another way, okay, I'm gonna go back to this again and let's see if we can get it to do that. Tell me what the top ranking URLs are. Okay, top ranking URLs in Google search are. Okay, now again, I'm just spitballing here because I just wanna see what it can actually return back and see if it can actually pull information. Nope, it can't do it. I'm a text-based AI and I can't assist with that. Please try using SEMrush to retrieve the requested information. And now let's see what it says, okay? Sure, I can help you with that. So now it's gonna tell us that SEMrush is a tool that could be used, blah, blah, blah. You can enter this information into the search bar, then it'll generate a report. So again, this is what you're seeing with BART, okay? So it's telling us that it has access to the internet, but then when we ask it simple questions to go retrieve information or tell us what the top ranking pages are, it now no longer is able to actually perform that function. So if I say try a SEMrush to retrieve the requested information, now it's just giving me generalized information about SEMrush. So this is the stuff that I went through and I probably spent about three or four hours on this yesterday, just entering in this kind of stuff. And it'll just give you circles. It'll just turn you around over and over again. The longer the conversation continues, the more you realize that this is just not ready for prime time with the kinds of things that we wanna be able to do with it. All right, so since Bard also has access to Keyword Planner and SEMrush, let's see if we could pull some keyword information from it. Now I already tested this right before here, so I already have the prompt ready to go. So it is generate a list of keywords related to a local tree removal service that have a keyword volume of at least 100 and also have a low keyword difficulty rating. Now I would stop there and as I produce that, all I would get was a list of keywords. I wouldn't get the volume and I wouldn't get the difficulty rating. With BARD, you have to be specific, okay? So I added and provide the results with the keyword search volume and the difficulty rating. Let's see what we get. Okay, so here we are. It has generated that list for us and it's a pretty short list. We didn't get a whole lot, but we get tree removal. It says 100,000 100, search volume and it tells us that it is a 30 keyword difficulty rating. So we're getting search volume certainly over 100, right? But we're getting these huge uh, keywords that are obviously going to be very challenging to ultimately rank for, but I just wanted to throw this uh, out there so you could see what you can get. So these are some pretty big ones here, okay? So generate a list of local searches and provide 
the same info. Okay, so a list is local searches related. Okay, so we have tree removal near me. Okay, we have tree removal in city. We have tree removal company near me. So you get some additional uh, keywords, but notice how limited this is, okay? Here you're only getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What are you getting here? Uh, seven keywords, and here you're getting one, two, three, four, five. You're only getting five keywords. So here this, I find that just kind of going back and forth with Bard is, is a pain, and it's a cumbersome process when you could just go to Keyword uh, Planner and just grab this information and get it over with. So we're not there. If we have to keep going back and forth with the tool, um, then again, it's, it's coming along. So I don't wanna disparage it too much, but the problem here is, is it's just not ready for speed. And that's what most of us are ultimately looking for, which is to cut down the amount of steps that are necessary in order to do our proper SEO research, generate content and so forth. Okay, so that'll about do it for this kind of quick intro review of BARD overall. It's okay, it's got a long ways to go. So if you're looking for speed and efficiency, use your keyword tools to gather what you need and then hop over to something fast like GPT, in particular GPT-4, which take a look at my other videos, I'll talk about that in order to get the actual work done. So on another video, I'm gonna be diving into the actual content that is created from BARD, but I could tell you right now, it's very similar to the experience that I've had here in the keyword research and the kind of general informational problems that I have. So everything right now is infinitely faster, more accurate, and just generally better uh, in GPT-4 than it is for BARD. So if you like this video and looking out for future ones coming up pretty soon, make sure you like, subscribe to this channel, comment below, let me know your thoughts if you've tried BARD and any input you may have. Thank you so much for watching.